Hey, hey, howdy, happy day, COVID. Whoever decided that a liquor store is more essential than a hair salon is obviously a bald-headed alcoholic. Hey, just saying. Stupidity travels faster than COVID. Wanted to share that with you too, because you know what? Before a fact is out of your mouth, gossip is three quarters of the way around the whole planet. That's pretty much it. Stupidity does travel that quickly. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Recently, I drove out in my RV. I wanted to go out and have a little bit of a holiday and wanted to visit some people. And, and it occurred to me, you know, I'm, I'm driving on roads that are owned by the government. I get into Edmonton and I'm at an RV park owned by the city. <laughs> and right beside it is a ski hill owned by the city. And then I went golfing, golf course, owned by the city, and I thought, wow, the socialism is just incredible. The city of Edmonton, city of Calgary, socialism is in both cities, and they own everything, everything. They're buying houses all of the time, they're spending taxpayers' money. These are people that, that to them, this, this is free enterprise to them. I mean, these are people that, that uh, couldn't get a job. They don't have the ability to survive in the real world, and they certainly are not entrepreneurs, right? But this is their way to be entrepreneurs. I remember Christy Clark in British Columbia, she was the premier, she was a socialist, and I remember her saying, we're going to invest in all these plants, LVG or whatever they were, and, and that's capitalism. What? That was her government doing it. And what's his name in Quebec? can't remember his name. Anyway, he was the premier and he put a bunch of government money, which is taxpayer money, into some mining projects in northern Quebec. And he too said to the Empire Club, I was at, at a session there one time, and he said, capitalism works. What? Free enterprise. What? <laughs> That's how they roll, right? That's how they talk. It's quite incredible, really. And Edmonton is the same. And I think all governments, you know, the conservative government, the people that are running to be the conservative government, I think they need to start working from the bottom up. They need to go to cities and see mayors and premiers and say, guys, this isn't how we were supposed to work here. We're supposed to do this and we're supposed, you know, they need to kind of get with the program. Albuquerque, the police there recently uh, had a situation where they had a 911 call and they said, hey, there's bad guys there, they have guns, we're going to pack all of our social workers into a minivan, no more policemen, and they're going to go and solve it. The mayor, Tim Keller, said that this is a first-of-his-kind cabinet-level department that will respond to calls. <laughs> boy, oh boy, that's a slippery slope because you start sending all these do-gooders there without guns and you've got bad guys there with guns. I don't think that's going to work out very well. We'll see what happens with all this defund the police stuff. You know, over the past couple of months, three months at least, the left has shamed people who leave their home or don't social distance and don't wear a mask. These same people then came out and said, but it's okay if we join hands and hug and kiss and have love fests for the uh, Black Lives Matter. Let's all protest and loot. Let's break windows and steal stuff, right? And so it's okay now. No more COVID, I guess. No more social distancing. And then President Trump has a rally in Oklahoma and all of a sudden they're right back to the other side and how dare you do that? You need social distancing and so on. So they're bad people, these liberal left-wing people. They really are. You know, it's okay for them to do whatever they like, but nobody else can. And they prove it every day, every single day. On June 5th, 1,300 public health professionals in the United States, their infectious disease professionals and community stakeholders, they signed a letter stating this, white supremacy is a lethal public health issue that contributes to COVID. Okay, have you got that? White supremacy. 1,300 people, probably if you drill down on that, most of those people that signed are probably white. I mean, so many people hate white. Why? I mean, all you white people out there, Y'all better be paying attention to this because haven't you noticed? Watch television. There's no white people anymore. If there is, it's always mixed into a, you know, a racial mix. Um, it, it's not good. I don't think we've done anything bad and everybody's out to get us and they're really working at it. And you're going to have COVID. Wow. White supremacy is a lethal public health issue that contributes to COVID. That's so dumb. I don't even know how I could respond to that. I mean, that, that's really something. Freedom of expression. Recently, we had a, a person write in to us on a, one of our lines, one of our platforms, and he said, Brian, I agree with you on most things, but, but I'm not with this taking a knee. They're entitled to take a knee. It's freedom of expression. I thought about that, and I thought, you know what? Okay, I, I get that. Individual rights, freedom, 
even though I may disagree with you, I will support your right to say whatever you want to say always because there is freedom of expression, but taking the knee, does this fall into uh, this? I don't think so. Is it a hate crime? Probably, because it's only done for the most part, when people are singing the national anthem and people take the knee and they won't stand up and pay attention and say kind of, you know, God bless America. And, and uh, that's hate. And so I don't go along with that. I, I think you're a traitor and I think they're two separate issues. I think the Black Lives Matter and, and standing up for your flag indeed are two separate issues. That would be my response to that. You know, this John Bolton, he's writing a book. A lot of it might be made up, but as he went along, who knows, who cares, but he does say one statement that kind of struck me. He says, President Donald Trump does not like Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Of course not. How could he? What's to like? We have a fellow here, Derek Salone. He wrote this email the other day, and I thought it was pretty profound. In Canada, we hear a lot about diversity. He's running for the leadership of the Conservative Party. We should not make the mistake of only valuing diversity in things like skin color, language, and religion. True diversity must also entail a variety of opinions, points of view, and philosophies that inform a vibrant culture of ideas. Increasingly in Canada, we've seen the emergence of a cancel culture, which wields the power to intimidate, silence, and eliminate voices that express ideas that dare to contradict the narrow set of acceptable ideas dictated by the very left-leaning establishment. Wow, wow, that's so well said. I've been saying that too for a long, long time. It's so accurate. Now, it's interesting, I've said before on this program that, that I've invited all four of the people that uh, are running for the leadership of the Conservative Party candidate to come on the show with me. And, and they've all ignored me, and, and I've expressed my uh, dislike for the system, and maybe even for them, to them. And I got a response here recently from Derek Sloan, and he says, I would love to come on your show. So watch for that. We're in the process now of setting a date, and, and at the moment, he's got my vote. And, and we'll see at the end of the show if he can retain my vote and if he can get your vote. Because I told him, I said, millions of people, they want to know. They want to know who to vote for in this because there has to be a better solution. Hey, a Shetland pony could lead the country better than the guy we have now. In Canada, I get it, but we need someone strong, someone with new ideas, and, and not just with a message. Uh, from him, we need to, he's a messenger. We need to change the message from the party. As a man, That'd be me. I used to think I was pretty much a regular person because I was born white. I was born into a two-parent household, and whether likely or not, I'm now privileged, and I'm a racist, and I'm responsible for the hardship of others. That's my deal, right? I earn money, but, you know, I was advantaged. <laughs> Son of a gun. I'm heterosexual, which, according to gay folks, makes me homophobic, I guess. I'm not a Muslim. I guess I'm an infidel. I'm older than 60, so I guess I'm useless. Pretty much, right? I think, I reason, and I doubt much of what the mainstream media tells me, which makes me a right-wing conspiracy goof. That'd be me. I believe in hard work, fair play, and fair compensation according to each individual's merits, which today makes me anti-socialist, certainly anti-Trudeau, and anti-liberal, anti-government, and so on. I believe that our system guarantees freedom of effort, not freedom of outcome or subsidies, which must make me a borderline a uh, social path? Maybe. I'm proud of our flag and I stand during the national anthem. I stand because I'm proud. I want to be proud. I used to be. I want to be again. So I guess that makes me a racist. I don't know what it is. Here I'm going to end today with something that is of no consequence and means nothing. You shouldn't even care about this. But I got to tell you anyway, semi-profound. In May 1886, Coca-Cola was invented. Several years later, uh, he went broke. It went into bankruptcy and he didn't make any money and the first year of business um, he made 50 bucks. I think he went into bankruptcy. You know what? I might not be right with that. That was Pepsi-Cola that went into bankruptcy. Backing up now, Coca-Cola, but he didn't make any money. He had uh, $50 in sales the first couple of years and it cost him $70 to get sales. He finally sold out and the new guys started to bring it all together and as of 2017, Coca-Cola is a public traded Fortune 500 company with more than 43 billion in revenue per year. And the company has 150,000 employees. That's a big success story. Bankruptcy Pepsi, not so successful, but they snapped out of that too. Y'all snap out of the ether yourself and come back here tomorrow. See ya.